And it's not about not working hard. That's not what I'm saying. You will, you will have to work hard at some of these things, but the, the difference is that you're working hard to build the machine, not working hard to earn the income. So it's a big difference between earned income and passive income. What's up, everybody? What is up? Welcome back to the Science of Flipping podcast. I am your host, Justin Colby. And on this episode, I have a super, super special guest, a good friend of mine, someone who I believe is a pioneer in our industry. Mr. Brian Page is here. But before I get to Mr. Brian Page, our top sponsor, Minute Pages, has to make sure you have a website for your real estate investing business. It is priced better than anyone else. It has more utility than anyone else. If you're a real estate investor and you need credibility, influence, and authority in the space of your city and real estate investing for your brand, go to minutepages.com, $97 a month for a professional website. All right, we are here with the man. What is up, Brian Page? What's happening, brother? Justin, what is going on, man? Good to be here. Dude, I'm fired up. I just, uh, I had one of these new little canned coffees. I had uh, 140 milligrams of caffeine. <laughs> so uh, I'm ready for this episode, bro. I, I use sugar. That keeps me pumped up. I got my Jolly Ranchers here on the desk. <laughs> there you go. I love that. Well, dude, um, there's a lot to say. I think most of my audience probably knows you as the Airbnb or B&B formula guy, yep. um, which I think you've done a terrific job with that brand and the systems and tools and, and videos and training and all that. But uh, I uh, am in alignment with you. I wanted to have you on here talking more about your book and don't start a side hustle and the philosophy behind all that. I think it's very timely. I think you're the voice to be able to have that. And so let's kind of jump into this book that you're launching first. Where does everyone find it? How do they go get it? Let's start there and then we'll jump in. Okay. Well, um, I'm going to hold that because I got, I got something I want to tell everybody about. Uh, yeah. All right. And then too. So I'll, I'll tell you where to get it here in a minute, but yeah, the book is, it, you know, it's, it's kind of contrarian to what everybody's telling you to do right now. You know, you, you listen to people like Gary Vee and he says, you know, I'm, I'm working while you're sleeping. You got to hustle harder. You know, you, you're not, you're not successful because you're not working hard enough. And, you know, and we kind of wear it like a badge of honor as entrepreneurs. Like I yeah. work harder than anyone else, but I, I think there's a different way. And it's, it's not so much about hustle. In my opinion, it's about flow. It's about cash flow. And there's a very big difference between cash flow and a side hustle. And so what I want to do is I want to teach people how to start creating sources of income that are not dependent on them. Mm. That's a big, big distinction. And I think that there's a new movement here. I'm going to uh, just coin the movement as a passivepreneur movement. I want people to start thinking about becoming a passivepreneur over becoming an entrepreneur. So we can talk about that as well. I love that, dude. You should you should have an event. I'd love to speak at that event, passivepreneur, man. Because oh, we're working on it. It's already it's already happening. Yeah. All right. I claim I throw my yeah. hat in the ring. I want to be a all speaker. right. You're in the ring. <laughs> I'm fully on. I'm on your page, bro. That's why I wanted you on. And I'm excited that you were able to find time. You're very busy. But listen, I just started my own fund. Not, awesome. I mean, a lot of different reasons. But one of them is the passivepreneur. Mm -hmm. As an owner of a fund. Mm -hmm. As it's up and as it is running the first year, it's not optimal. But beyond that, it's really incredible because quite literally doesn't take any management of myself, right? Yep. That is a huge, and we're not just talking about single family rentals. We're talking about like a $12 million fund. Mm -hmm. So I'm very much in alignment with you, right? Because that is almost like an annuity, right? Like that every is, month. That is the definition. I'm that is a definition of what I, what I teach in this book, which is what I call passive income vehicles. So that what identifies a passive income vehicle is something that, yes, it may take your time to set up like you just explained, but over time, it has the potential to make exponential income, but yet your time involvement decreases exponentially. So the amount of money that you make per hour invested goes just crazy. So in other words, you want to look for things that are scalable for income and at the same time, opposite scalable for time involvement. So a lot of people will get involved in all kinds of businesses, become entrepreneurs, will find things that are very lucrative. I've done a lot of these things in my life and they make a lot of money, but then they work 80 hours a week to avoid working the 40 hours a week on the job. And that's where a lot, we find a lot of entrepreneurs are, are stuck, right? And they look down on the nine to fiver dude. And they're like, well, I'm at least on my own boss, but they don't, 
talk about the fact, we don't talk about the fact that the average entrepreneur in America right now makes 72,000 a year. So it's only slightly better than the nine to fire. That's what the average entrepreneur makes. And, and that doesn't even account for all the failed businesses. You know, we know that most businesses fail in the first five years. So, so entrepreneurs are not getting rich by and large, but they are working their asses off. And so that's who I want to help. Yeah, dude, I think that's, a, that's quite great, right? I mean, obviously, I'm very much in the real estate space. So are you, you know, you're flipping, you're doing Airbnb, you're arbitrage, you have a whole thing going. I'm myself wholesaling, flipping, buying rentals. Ironically, I don't even have a short term rental slash even don't even have the arbitrage model that you teach. So maybe, maybe we need to discuss about that's that. Great. Yeah, well, um, I mean, real estate's it. I mean, real estate's the OG. I wrote, I wrote about this in my presentation I did recently. Real estate is the OG of passive income vehicles. It is. I mean, real estate is one of the best vehicles, period. It still is to this day. Um, and, and, you know, but the thing about real estate is you either have to have money or credit, you generally, mm -hmm. to buy property, you have money or credit. And that's fine. Owning assets is amazing. But unlike what Kiyosaki says, you don't have to own assets. To, you know, they, they talked about- You can the control them. You can control assets and you can create assets from scratch. We live in a mm. creator economy now and we live in a sharing economy. So you can create assets and control assets to generate income, passive income without owning anything, which is phenomenal. And that's something that I want to, I want to delve into too. Yeah. I think it's opposite of how, I mean, I'm 41. How old are you? Uh, 47. So I think our parents were like the last generation of like, you must own a home you must have this, right? Like that old yeah. school white picket fence, own your home, that's your life. I think yeah. our generation was probably one of the first of like the entrepreneur, like, yeah. let's go, right? But I think it has changed even during our adulthood, right? To your point, where now it's not even about owning, it's, you can create, we're in a creating space now, right? That's kind of the new form. Yeah, and yeah, I mean, there's not, you should own assets, I believe. So once you start making money, the best place to park it is in real assets. I believe real estate is one of the best places to park your money, but um, long term for wealth. But, uh, you know, you've got people making millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars with stuff that they created from scratch. I mean, you can start a, you can you can create an asset online for a few hundred dollars, a few thousand dollars, digital courses, digital mm -hmm. ebooks, memberships, all these different things that you can you can create for almost nothing and generate significant cash flow that is automated, that, that is over time, takes none of your time to do. And I have 23 different sources of passive income currently. And give most one them, example most of them right take, now is, is so the audience can even just understand what you're thinking. Okay, so let me give you one that was one of my, one of my favorites. I have a top 10 list, actually. One of my favorites is affiliate marketing. Sure. So affiliate marketing is the idea that you sell someone else's product, you didn't create the product, um, you don't create anything, you, you just have the permission to control eyeballs, control traffic to that offer and you make a commission. So if you have an email list, you send uh, your list uh, some kind of like, hey, I wanna teach you about flipping. My friend Justin wants to teach you about flipping. They go there, they buy your course. I get a fee every time that happens or a commission every time that happens. So it's truly hands off other than just pressing the button or somebody on my team pressing the button to send the emails. And you can do that, it doesn't have to be through email. You can do that through uh, influence on your social media. You can do it through many different channels. But again, you're controlling, you're a controller there. You're not actually creating anything or owning and buying anything. Well, I think so the I key that market. makes that all work yeah. for your point is social media. Because one yeah. of the first questions I would have as a marketer and you yourself are like, well, how are you building your buyers list? How are you building that email list? Well, yep. the answer these days to me, and maybe you have a different answer, is social media all day. It's mm -hmm. TikTok, it's IG, it's yep. YouTube shorts. It's that, yep. right? Wouldn't you agree? Yep. Yeah, I mean, well, you know, some of these some of these things uh, are better depending on what phase you're at in your business. You know, if you don't have an audience, that, that might not be the best model for you. But some of these things don't require any audience at all. I mean, you don't mm -hmm. have to be a social media person. I I started out with a very basic course that taught people what I was doing in real estate, which was Airbnb at the time. And that course, uh, once I created it, I updated every six months or so. But once I created it um, and launched it, that, that was, gosh five years ago and it's done tens of millions of dollars and it's been hands off. I mean, it still sells to this day without any involvement from me. Mm -hmm. In fact, the content that's going in the course now is from other people that are creating content for me, my students and my, my coaches. So that's an example of creating an asset one time that produces income over and over and over and over again for years. And that's happened across many different things. And, and, and that's, uh, again, that's in the creator economy. And what does it cost to create a course? Not much. You get a little bit right. of software, you get a, maybe a designer or a funnel builder or something like that. And you build something and now you have something that can generate income. Yeah. And I think when most people even hear the name and it was something I did myself, right? I heard the name yeah. of your book, Don't Start a Side Hustle. Yeah. And you immediately say, okay, he wants you 
to become an entrepreneur. That's what Brian's going to say is don't just do this part time on the side over here. Just go all in. Right. Mm. But really, you're you're almost going against that. Right. Saying you're going to end up kind of going 80 hours that. a week, which is total yeah. facts, by the way, as an entrepreneur myself, especially yeah. in the ramp up phase. I've done this 15 years. You, you've been in, in for quite some time. The yeah. ramp up phase is really where you're just grinding it out. Right. Yeah. Totally. Um, and unless you have the ability to scale and you're a true leader, which most mm-hmm. to your point aren't right, then you're stuck in that. And it, yeah. is that much, if any better than just having a job? I would, I would argue no. Cause you're, well, no, I mean, you know, people, people forget that, you know, it, it's like the question that seems to be in everybody's mind. Do I work for someone else or do I work for myself? And I would ask the question, why work? You know, why work? If you don't have yeah. to have your money come from your, your own hands and your own effort, like over time, why would you choose anything else? Because in my, in my world, the definition of wealth is not just money or a dollar amount or a net worth or a cash flow amount. It's also being very rich on time. And most entrepreneurs are time bankrupt. They have no time. They have no energy. They, a lot of them have no health because they spend all of themselves on their business to keep it going. And the the true definition or the true test of whether or not you're an entrepreneur or a passivepreneur is if you stop doing the thing, does the money continue to come in? Mm-hmm. If you stop doing whatever it is, does the money continue to flow in? And as Ron Legrand, you know who Ron Legrand is, he's one of the of OG real estate. His favorite saying is the less I do, the more I make. So, you know, if, if you can do less and make more, you are by definition a passivepreneur. And that that's a big, big difference between, you know, being the Gary V type. That's like, I'm going to work my ass off. Now, if you love what you do, great, go do that. But a lot of people want to do something else. They're trying to do their entrepreneurship to go get a bunch of money to go live some kind of life or have some kind of other thing they want to do. And they're miserable because they're just never going to arrive at that destination, you know? And I'm, I'm just like, hey, you can arrive. You're just doing it the wrong way. It doesn't, it's either your ass or your assets. I'd rather just be my assets working hard, not me. There's no doubt. And, and the, the thing that I think is so true when this, when talking about this whole thing is like, you only have one round on this planet, right? You got one try at this whole thing. So you don't know when it's it, over either. You don't know when this thing ends. Never. <laughs> we literally, that just gave me shivers. Cause we literally just had this discussion of like, yeah, you're 41. You have so much life. Dude, you don't know the drunk driver you might come across, you know, tomorrow or whatever. Like you just yeah. it. So you might as well live it the way you want to live it. And there's no next Brian Page. There's no next Justin Colby. There's no next. Yeah. You need to create this for yourself. And what I believe, Brian, you're saying right now is this is the alternative to the mm-hmm. to the historically two sides of what you could be. You can be the entrepreneur. You can be the employee. And what you're offering is, hey, dude, there's actually a third lane here and yeah. you can go into passivepreneur. Uh, by the way, all you guys come see me on Brian's stage. I'll be speaking there. <laughs> um, but I think it's really just brilliant because, because right. again, it gives the people options. There's no one size fits all, right? Yeah, there's no people, you need to yeah, do one or the other. Totally. And some people might think, okay, Brian's talking about like hashtag van life or being couch surfing or, you know, being a bum. I mean, there, that is one lifestyle. You could certainly do that, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about truly having your cake and eating it too. I'm talking about having an incredible lifestyle, incredible wealth and income, and also having tremendous amount of time to go do what you want to do. And the, the number one test that I tell people to, to ask themselves if they're, you know, where they're at in their own personal work is I call it the Powerball question. If tomorrow you woke up and you'd won the Powerball, I don't know what it is today. I don't play the lottery. Let's a say lot more than it used to three, be. Jesus. $300 million. I mean, it's a billion. I don't know. It's absurd. So yeah. let's say you won $300 million tomorrow. Would you go into work? And I don't mean just if you work for someone else, would you go, would you just say to your business, okay, I'm done with that. <laughs> or, you know, would anything change tomorrow? And if the answer is yes, then you're probably not doing the thing that you really most want to do in mm. your life. And so I've got friends that, you know, they love golf. I don't play golf, but they, they, they love golf. They would play golf every day, but they're not good enough to be pro. So yeah. the idea that you have to take your passion, and make it pay is ridiculous. Not, not every passion has to pay. In fact, if you made it pay, you might actually hate golf at that point because you're not doing it anymore for the enjoyment of it. So my, my argument would be don't try to make your passions pay. Instead, find a source of income that isn't you and then go pursue your passions and go do what you want to do in life because you have the means to do it. And I think that's a different mentality than like, than, than, than we're stuck in as, as entrepreneurs. You know? I, I, I agree a hundred percent. I think that your perspective of like, if you got your 300 million, yeah. what are you doing every day? And if you're not currently doing that, yeah, then you're lost right now and you need to come back, right? You need to figure out how do I create that? Yeah. And that's, yeah. you know, what I would, 
I guess the question I'd pose to you and what I know out of my years of experience is, is this something that people can financially create a high level of income fast or do they need to kind of get in there, stick with it, push forward? What is this passive penor? Yeah, that's a good question. Lane. I've never, I've never been asked that. Okay. So fast is all relative. That's um, right. Because, because you totally know, most right. people think 30 to 40 years, you know, retirement plan is, is fast, you know, or it's yeah. good enough. I, I would say it's not the, the 30 to 40 year plan. It's more the three to four year plan, but in order to do something like that fast, which is kind of beyond most people's belief systems is, is that you have to find the right vehicle. Mm. So, so the, the thing that I always talk about, I talk about this in the book as well, is that if you're trying to go from here, from New York to LA, um, you know, walking, it's going to take, you know, I don't know how many months or weeks to do that. If you get on a bike, you could probably do it. in I think the re record is a couple of weeks, uh, to, to, to driving it as 40 hours. And then there's, there's people that have run, you know, ran across America, but then, then you, then there's better vehicles, right? You can get in a plane, for example, now you're using leverage because you're not the one actually driving. You have a pilot who's driving, you can sit back and chill and you got, you got leverage now and you're going 500 miles an hour, but there's even faster ways to get there than that. You know, we're going to soon have suborbital flight, which means you can go from New York to LA in 30 minutes, 45 minutes. You know, that's happening right now. I mean, Elon and all these people are working on this kind of stuff. So there's always a faster vehicle. The problem is the guy that gets into a vehicle or the girl that gets in a vehicle and thinks I'm going to be rich in the next three years, but there's no possible possibility of that happening. Or they get in the vehicle that's going to take 40 years and they're happy with that. They don't even question that. They're just like, oh, that's fine. I'll retire in 40 years. But they, their whole life is spent in the wrong vehicle and it will never get them to where they want to go because it's just a wrong vehicle. It's not that they're, they're doing something wrong. So you got to make sure you're in the right vehicle. And that's why I talk about a lot in the book. Um, so for example, if you wanted to go quick with very little money, for example, you wouldn't go buy assets. You wouldn't go buy companies and buy real estate because that takes a lot of money or credit generally to do. You could become a creator, for example. Um, I'll just give you some of the examples. Um, you can do monetized content. You can license music and photos. You can create digital courses, digital books. I, I wrote this book. This is not even a real book. I mean, it is, but I've, I wrote these two books. I've done over a million dollars in sales on these little, these little books right here. <laughs> you know, you can Love do, it. you can do memberships. Um, you can do uh, affiliate marketing. None of these things take a whole lot of money. Uh, and you see people doing this every day, day in and day out. It's not so much about what Brian's done. Who cares? You know, you go, you, you hear about these events like Funnel Hacking Live, where you, Russell Brunson teaches about doing funnels and you go there and there's hundreds of people going across the stage that are all making millions of dollars a year, at least a million a uh, million dollars in their funnel. And so you see it happening all over and any, anybody can do this. You just have to find the right tools and the right vehicle to do it. So, um, so that's kind of the road that I take people down. Yeah. So the one thing you were bringing up that I think I want to highlight just for my sure. audience, because I preach on this is proper expectations. Yes. If you think it's going to take 30 years, then this is going to be your fastest way because it won't. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. If you think it's going to take three months, then you're going to quit again and you're going to go do something else because it's likely not going to take three months for you to create the type of income that you're trying to achieve, right? Yeah. I think in any vertical, real estate flipping, Airbnb arbitrage, wholesaling, mm -hmm. rentals, like yeah. there's just patience that's involved in the right expectation. And yes. if you have an improper expectation, then ultimately you're doomed for failure. How I define failure is by quitting. That's yeah. the only way you fail is quit, right? That's true. And so- that has to be highlighted because whether you use the entrepreneur route, the employee route, or this third route that Brian is highlighting here, mm -hmm. improper expectations will crush all three, right? Totally. You will not want to do any of it. So make sure you have proper expectations because if you can take this third route that Brian's highlighting, you'll likely be a lot more fulfilled because you'll have a passion around it. And it's not sucking all of your days and nights to try yeah. to build it up, yeah. but you need to have the right expectations, or you will stop that as well. I think most people though, their expectations are too low because they hear some of what I'm saying right now. And they might it's like, that's total sounds like total BS because it's, it's outside their realm of what's possible. So right. you have to be careful that if you, you have to really believe it before you see it. So there's opportunities are everywhere, but you won't see the opportunities that have the potential to do that quickly. If you don't first believe that they're possible, you have to say, well, Either he's totally full of it and there's no such thing as that. There's no such thing as getting rich quick or making that kind of money quickly. Then you're just not going to see the opportunity. But if you get around a whole bunch of people that are doing exactly that, I mean, the first time I got around a bunch of people that were crushing it in real estate, I was like, well, why am I not crushing it in real That's estate? That's right. The first time I got around a bunch of marketers that were making gazillions of dollars online, I was like, why are they doing 
it just changes everything in your wiring to just see people doing it and realize that it is real. And Facts. so, so I want to, first of all, take that whole limit limiting belief away from people that it can't be done because it can be done and then put them in the right vehicle work and happen fairly quickly. And then it doesn't happen overnight. That's the other thing I talk about in the book. Exponential. The thing about exponential is it looks like nothing's happening for 80% of the time. It's a exponential stick. is not where you go to work. And then on Friday, you get a paycheck. You go to work again and you get another paycheck. It doesn't work that way. Uh, as a mentor of mine once said, he said, Brian, are you willing to work two to three years for $0 at the chance of making millions? I said, yeah. He said, 100%. Well, you're telling me that, but are you really? Because think about what it's going to be like nine months in or 12 months in, you still made zero money. So, and I've done that on several of the vehicles I've worked on where I didn't make nothing for a year or two years. And then suddenly, boom, millions. And people say, well, you're an overnight success. I'm like, no, I was in the right vehicle and I did not stop. And I knew it was going to be exponential eventually. So, so that's, that's the key is also that patience, but two to three years sounds absurdly fast, but not when you realize that nothing happens for a long time, sometimes building a vehicle. I mean, ask anybody who has a podcast, anybody that has a social media following, anybody that has a, has created any kind of platform, anybody that's known, you know, it takes time. It really does take time. But when it happens, then it's just like, oh, you break through that wall and suddenly things start happening. So um, so that that's one of the things I like to teach people about as well. Yeah, I think you had another thing that I think is just profound, right? That everyone needs to be aware of what he was saying is, the commitment needs to be at the same level of your desire for income. Because mm -hmm. if they if they are off, yeah. then you're going to quit in that two years or nine months or whatever, whatever your mentor was giving you, right? Like yep. I was given my first mentor straight out of UCLA. My very first mentor said, are you willing to live like no one other, no one else is willing to live so you can have what no one else has? Yeah. And just like you, hell yeah, bro, I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> and then the work began. And I said, yep. Oh, this isn't exactly fun. Yeah. But I also had the commitment level so unwavering. Mm -hmm. 15 years later, here I am, right? Yep. And the income and, and all the things that come along with that. But it is that hockey stick that you realize first comes in the work, you might even kind of go down, and then it just goes. Zink. Yeah. True. But you know, the, the, the highlight that I say is CIA, right? Not the government agency commitment, intention, and action. Mm -hmm. And if you are committed and have the right intention mm -hmm. and just keep taking the right action that Brian would advise you to be taking, or I would advise you to be taking or whatever the case, yeah, then just go and, and stick to CIA and allow that to transition because inevitably you will always make more money than you would as an employee potentially more than you would as an entrepreneur without the work. Mm -hmm. But if you lack the commitment, that's the trigger point, right? To your believe it before you see it idea. Yeah. It's just so true. You just and, have to. Yeah. And it's not about not working hard. That's not what I'm saying. You will, you will have to work hard at some of these things, but the, the difference is that you're working hard to build the machine not working hard to earn the income. So it's a big difference between earned income and passive income. Mm. So some of these things, if you're going to create an asset from scratch, it's a lot harder than writing a check and buying a house. You, bu you buy right. an asset like a house or an apartment building. The minute you buy it, hopefully there's, there's cash flow if you have a tenant in there. It's not like that when you build assets from scratch. You have to build something or control something that isn't yours uh, uh, to control other people's products and assets and that kind of stuff. But then eventually over time it's, it works. And so it, there, there is effort, there is that kind of stuff involved, but it's, it's something where you're willing to invest a certain amount of time to create something that can earn over and over and over again. And if it doesn't have the ability to do that, then don't spend any of your time on it. And, you know, and people used to say, well, Brian, do you offer like one-on-one -on -one coaching? I'm like, no, people have offered me all kinds. Of, I just don't do it. I don't sell my time. It's a, it's a principle. I just don't sell my time. Right. And so I've always been that way. You know, I'm very intense on that, on that, but it's, it's true because I only want to build systems and look at ways of building systems that generate more income. And that, cause that frees me up because when I stop doing that, the machine keeps going. Yes. I might need to tinker on it, but I'm not involved in the creation of income anymore. Yeah. I think, you know, what, what changed the game for all of us, right. Is even think about something like Uber, which is probably not on your, I would guess it's not on your list or is it on your list? Uh, Uber is the, is it the ultimate side hustle, which is what one okay. thing I tell you not to do. Yeah. It was right. a perfect example of what not to do. Right. But again, there's just so much, again, when you and I were, you're 47, I'm 41, like even something as simple as that, right? I mean, I Ubered, I Ubered years ago when I had to make ends meet, I did it. But the problem with Uber is when you stop driving, that you stop no earning. dollars come in. Yeah, that's it. And, and so the, the thing that I was kind of going towards with Uber is there's so much ingenuity nowadays. Yeah. TikTok didn't exist two years ago, right? Like yeah. 
you can just create. And it's just up to you to do that in a vertical that you really enjoy, right? Yep. That can create that passively. Yep. To, to your first example, you know, the affiliate space is just so great, but it's changed from when you and I got into this, Brian, right? You yep. and I got into, hey, Brian has a great offer. I'll email my list. Yeah. Now it's like, hey, let me go on TikTok and talk about whatever it is and have a link in my TikTok or in my Instagram on my story. Hey, click the link, yep. join me for a thing. And then I, I don't even have to go create. I don't have to create yep. a, a list, I guess I should say. I yep. don't have to build that. I don't have to put work into doing that. Quite literally, I just need to use social presence. I mean, just the internet has now just allowed for so much creativity that anyone who isn't actually going out to enjoy their life and, and to live the life that they deserve to be living, I mean, I they're soft, right? I mean, like, there, I mean there's, there's so many ways to do it, though, even if you don't have an audience, because I, I could just sense that some people might be watching us and thinking, well, I don't, nobody knows me. I don't have a list. I don't have a show. I don't have a whatever. I'll give you an example. So referrals is one of the best sources of passive income, referrals. So I do business with companies that pay me a commission uh, on every client or customer that comes to them. But what they do is they do referrals, which means if I introduce that company to another company, let's say to you, you and your company, I say, hey, Justin, you need to talk to this guy. He offers something that'd be great for your people. Right. Boom. You, I make that introduction happen. Now, let's say you do millions of dollars in business with this guy. I get a percentage. It could be 5%, 2%, whatever, of everything that ever happens from Arbitrage. that introduction. How much time did that take me? Nothing. I just connected my network and made money appear out of nowhere. So you can do that if you have the influence to connect powerful people together. You can make money that way through referrals. And that's literally Bro, that is nothing. probably, and I don't know where that lands on your list, brother, but like Oh, it's it's uh, it's it's one of the best. I yeah, mean, it the is best. there, right? Like yeah. that is such a right. I mean, it's thing. truly effortless. And if you have a company that's you know gonna gonna continually track that forward, which a lot of companies do now, uh, lifetime referrals. That's the two of the most beautiful words that exist. <laughs> I, I I totally agree. And and again, listen, I don't want to give away the whole book on this episode because I want people to go buy it. I genuinely oh, trust me. There's need... hundreds of these, so they I can't give it all away. <laughs> that's right. But I love that one it, just because that's kind of my superhuman powers. I'm able to yeah. connect the right people and I'm in the yeah. middle and almost like a wholesale deal. Like I get this yeah. little, I'm like, except it's not nice. one deal. Like, it's a bunch of deals. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Um, well, dude, I, again, where can people, I know, I know we started off and you wanted to wait to the end, but I want you to kind of let people understand yeah. because this is powerful stuff. If you're sitting here, like your mind starting to turn, trust yeah. me, when Brian told me about this, my mind did the exact same thing. So you're, you're in good company there. This is really legitimate, right? This isn't yeah. some just thing. This is a yeah. lifestyle, right? It's a lifestyle play. This is a creative play. This is a, you know, uh, something to create the life you want, right? Yeah. Not just live, not just, you know, a yeah. human being, but a human winning, right? That's yeah. really what this is about. So Brian, why don't you give all the details you need to give about where to go, okay. what to do. And so you're going to, yeah, you guys are going to love this. So uh, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to give you something really incredible. And the only thing that I'm asking for you to do is to get one copy of this book. So if you go to watchfreetraining.com, watchfreetraining.com, I have a little 15 minute video where I explain more in depth, the concepts of the book and how it works and how you can become a passive preneur. And then at the end of that video, I'm going to ask you to buy a book and you're going to pay the same price that you pay on Amazon for the book, except that if you get, go to watch free training and get the book there, I'm going to give you some special things that you can't get on Amazon. So I'm going to give you an audiobook, instant download on audiobook. And this book's not even out yet. Okay. You get the instant audiobook for the first few chapters, me narrating it. You're going to get a PDF download of the book, first few chapters as well. You're going to get a, uh, you're going to get access to a passivepreneur training where I actually go into in-depth training with another passivepreneur. And we talk about what we're, what we're up to. And then on top of that, you're going to get access to my Facebook group, which is my Passivepreneur Facebook group, where you can meet other people that are doing things that I've never even thought of. They're really incredible and kind of be a part of a community of people that do this. So all those things are totally free for getting one hardcover copy of the book on Amazon. But if you go to watchfreetraining.com, you can uh, watch this video where I explain exactly all the things we're talking about here and how you can be a part of it and get started and hopefully find your own passive income vehicle in the next 30 days. Dude, and, and it's funny to... to... To all you listening, with all my business experience, I'm already like, literally my mind is <laughs> turning like, all right, what else can I just start to go so I can just keep getting these, whether the little checks that we just talked about, the bigger checks I like even more, um, go to that website, make sure you get a book. But here's the thing, and, and Brian, I hope you respect this. Take action, people. Like, don't, 
don't just get a book and put it on the bookshelf. Like what it doesn't help Brian doesn't help you. You're just back to your normal life, right? Like commitment, intention, and action C I a. And if this vibes with you, if you're like me and your head is spinning, I highly suggest (laughs) you go get that book. No, I'll tell you. I mean, I love books. You can see I got nothing but books behind me here. Books um, on books. My, you know, I've always read more than the year before. I've tried to read more and more and and uh, never read a single book in college that wasn't required. Uh, but as soon as I got out of college, I read the books that I wanted to read. And um, and it seems like the more I read, the, the, the more money I make. And I would say that the dollar for dollar, the best investment you can make of any investment would be in books. Honestly, that's what I believe. So, um, so everything you want to learn is already been written down and you just need to find somebody that you vibe with and you understand, and then you start implementing what they teach. And, uh, this is everything that I know about creating passive income. So I think it's going to be highly valuable to most people. Well, dude, I appreciate you. I appreciate you sharing some of the time, sharing your wealth of knowledge. You're very yeah. dynamic, right? There's multiple, multiple levels of Brian page and what you've created in the education space and your book is phenomenal. Um, Thank you. So I appreciate you. Obviously, everyone should be going and following. Where where do you want everyone to go follow you? Watchfreetraining.com. Watchfreetraining.com. Boom. Go to watchfreetraining.com. Make sure you get a piece of this uh, incredible uh, philosophy and, and hopefully you start taking action on it. So appreciate you, Brian. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, this yeah, has been huge, you. not just for my audience, but for me too, bro. So appreciate you. Appreciate you too. Thanks so much. Later.